Hey, hello, this is Captain. So I'm working on my example for the oil rig. Making good progress here, figuring out a lot of the stuff. Um, having some issues here and there, but figuring it out. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll bring you on. So I just uh, stuck one rod in, uh, moved it, hooked it up. It's currently hooked to the uh, swivel. The swivel is where your slurry is. So we have a large slurry tank here. This is the uh, slurry cleaner. They pipe into these tracks and then they go to these swivels. So if we come up here to the swivel, currently I have the swivel holding this. As you can see, we're getting some flow. I'm having issues with slurry flow, so um, we'll play with that a little bit. But let's go ahead and uh, start drilling at least. So it's currently in the swivel. I'm going to go ahead and start lowering the swivel down. And it should hear a connect noise. All right, so that's it connecting to the drill bit. So we'll do table clamp. Can you hear that rock grinding noise? The rock grinding noise means you're actually drilling. Now it stops. And so we should be out of slur uh, this slurry flow has been going to zero. So I'm trying to figure out what's, what's causing this. You see the slurry flow is at zero. We certainly have plenty of slurry in the tank. I'm gonna, I'll check pumps in a second here, but this has been an issue here as it stops drilling. So it might be ready for another pipe already. I have to try, I've tried that before and it hasn't done it, so. I'm gonna play with, put. So I'm gonna play with that a little bit. You can see it's, it's turning. Um, it's not, we're not getting any slurry, so that's an issue. So I kind of want to play with this. Like you see, we, I put a massive slurry tank in here just to deal with this, but uh, this is my water system. You see where uh, water goes through here and it cleans the slurry. I am getting slurry flow problems, which I'm not sure about. Um, as you can see, we're not getting any flow through there. This uh, flows clean slurry out. So I'm just checking all these, see what's up. Uh, currently it is a slurry issue that I'm having. I've tried hoses directly to the swivel head and that hasn't worked so it's not the tracks you see we have no flow here so I'm gonna go ahead and add a pipe and see if that does anything so let's go ahead and we'll stop the table I actually want to keep it connected actually we don't want to keep it connected to the table yeah let's keep it clamped to the table all right so I turn the table off and what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna start to so it's it's clamped to the table so I'm going to detach it from the swivel. Swivel can go all the way up. All right, swivel's on its way up. And next thing I want to do is the connector. Uh, this is connector up. As you see, I want to slide that so the orange part is in the rollers. It is. Let's do one more tap. Okay, now I'm going to move my crane back, and we'll grab another rod, another drill all right, so I'm going to rotate my unit here. Okay, and we'll grab a, another drill section. Okay, we'll move the slider up. And so we want to get this, uh, the slider all the way up to where the orange part is in the connector. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button here. And so I, I need to speed this up. As you can see, this rod's moving pretty slow, but... So it's currently going up, and I'm going to connect these two together, and then I'm st I think it's, it's got to be a slurry issue. Um, it will not make that drilling noise, the actual grinding noise, unless you have slurry flow. I don't know what is going on with this. Uh, I'm still working on it, trying to figure it out. Because I was losing all slurry flow, you know, to the uh, swivel. Yeah, it's one of the reasons I, why I made this big tank. I was just using prefab tanks um, like I did with the water on this end. All right, so this needs to go down now. Some more. So when this light comes on, we'll be good. So I need to turn the, uh, let's see. We're close. Okay, we're close. So now what I want to do is um, I want to clamp it in there. And now you see I get a light that tells me I can connect. I'm going to connect them. I'm going to disconnect my crane. Get my crane out of here. All right, so we have one pipe now. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on the clamp for the swivel. 
push it down, it will clamp. It grabs. Okay, now I can disconnect the clamp from the connector. We'll get rid of the connector, and now I'll shut off connect. Uh, table clamp is... We'll take that off, actually. And we'll slide this down. Now, oh, what's that? Swivel down. Okay, so swivel is down as much as it can, so we'll click the table clamp on and we'll start drilling. So we're not getting any grinding noise yet. I'm thinking that has to do with lack of slurry. If we don't have enough slurry going to there, it will never make that drilling noise. So I'm still trying to figure this out and see why it's doing this. You know, I can try forcing it down, take off the table clamp. Do table clamp, start going to swivel up a little bit. Just playing with it, trying to see the noise. So let's let's actually no clip in there and see what it does. So see how it it needs to go in this white section here where the where the drill bit is. Um, if I actually come out here, up oh, I'm through the world here. Okay, let's get back in the world here. Okay, and so let's look at this. If we page up here, you'll notice um, well depth. So we did drill down some 0.399371. So I definitely, when it makes that connection noise as it goes into the wellhead, that's it connecting to that drill. I don't know if that physically moves or not. So that, you hear it just made that click noise. So if we go back in here, you'll notice, see it's sitting in that white coupling there. It's actually in there. So it's connected to that. I, I think it has something to do with the slurry because we're not getting any slurry, that will cause problems. So I'm just gonna check all my connections here. So see, this is, it, the pump is on, but we're not pumping anything, which is strange to me. We have slurry in here. As you see, we have copious amounts of slurry in here. We have, this is our import here. So we're not getting any flow. So that's very interesting to me. I don't know why we're not getting any flow. And then down here we have, this is where the clean slurry should be going in. So I was almost wondering if it's contaminating, contaminated slurry, but um, we're not getting any through. It's weird. See, so, like this should be pumping out the slurry. So that's very interesting to me. So that seems to be the issue is we're not getting slurry because it will drill as if we get slurry. So let's go ahead back in the workbench and try to figure out what's up here. All right, so let's try something different here. So I want to try to think what to do here. Let's grab this really quick, the cleaner. This actually cleans our slurry. Now let's just move it. Oh, we're at right here. Right there is good for now. All right, now what I want to do is I want to, I'm just going to duplicate this tank. I'm gonna, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pump slurry through, and instead of cleaning it right now, I'm just going to dump it into another tank to uh, be essentially um, to be held. And then, and then once it's, it's um, sequestered, we can then worry about dealing with it after that. You know, the pump distances concern me a little bit, so that's one reason I made these tall tanks. It's actually sucking from the top of the tank, so that should uh, make sure that's not a problem. All right, so in here I want what we have here. I wonder if we need those filters. I don't know. Let's see. Slurry, jet fuel, diesel, seawater, fresh water. Slurry. Hmm. Um, let's put in nothing for right now. So let's actually just, I'm just going to, I'm just going to fill this tank up and see what I can do here. So let's see what we have here. That's right there. I'm going to delete this. All I'm going to do is dump into here. So it's going to take out of here and dump into there and we'll see what that does for us. Because I'm just trying to figure, I guarantee, no, I don't guarantee. My, my number one thought on what this, what could be causing this is an issue with, Slurry. It could be I screwed up a pump somewhere. I've literally checked these 10 times. And so we're going to leave this out, the cleaner out of there. So we just have an empty tank here and we have a full one. Let's grab some filters. They added new filters, so it wouldn't surprise me if 
they have to be part of it. So allow liquids, allow gases, off liquids. Okay, so let's let's put some filters in here to make sure that's not a problem. I doubt it. I highly doubt it, but let's do it anyway. All right. Let's stick them in there and see what we get. Okay. So this is allow gases off, allow gases off. Okay, so that's, so let's try this. So we're going to essentially just pump the slurry out of here and put it in there. So this is good. You guys can see, too, um, how I set this up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to raise my swivel all the way up. It just started there because it's easier to start there. It's, um, the pipes have to go to a certain level. So, all right, next thing I'm going to do is turn on my clamp. I found that turning on the clamp first helps tap that out because I don't even have to watch it. You'll hear it click. And then what we can do is we can start to rotate it and raise it at the same time. I need to speed up that raise speed, but as you can see, the sliders, these allow you to slide, so that's very convenient. All right, so we're going to go here, and I'm going to, you know, I don't, I'm not going to connect anything at the moment, but I just need to get it close to this connector. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is activate the clamp with the swivel. We can clamp multiple things at once, which is a good feature. As you can see, that tells us it's clamped. We're going to disconnect the crane and move the crane back. All right, good. So the swivel is connected. Let's go ahead and we're going to push the swivel all the way down. All right, so you heard it click. That clicked into the actual drill head. Next, I, we want to lock our table. We want to turn on the pumps. As you can see, we're pumping slurry. Let's start to turn on the um, table, which rotates the drill, and we'll listen for, for drilling noises. Sometimes if I have too much pressure, you'll notice it is turning. It will take a second for it to kind of catch up. There we go. So you heard it drilled for a second. Okay. So this is the longest I've had a drill. All right, so this seems to be... Okay, it just stopped, unfortunately. There we go. Okay, so it's actually working well now. So the issue was... Uh, the issue was the slurry. So I can't... I'm contaminating my slurry, was what I was doing. So I have to see I'm pushing down to drill. Perfect. So this is figured out now. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to stop the drilling process. All right, next I'm going to keep it clamped to the table. I'm going to disconnect the clamp. Uh, I'm going to shut off my slurry pumps, disconnect the uh, swivel clamp, and push that all the way up. I'm going to also raise up the connector. So we want that orange section of the tip of the rod to be inside of the rollers on top there, as you can see. Beautiful. All right, let's go ahead and we'll rotate my crane in. We'll go ahead and we'll clamp it. And I'm just going to line that up like so. And then I'm going to rotate to my next pipe. All right, so eventually what I'll do is I'm, I like this rotating design. What I'll probably end up doing is making rotating stacks that a uh, truck can deliver. So we'll go ahead and move this and start rising it up. There we go. I need to probably come in a little bit, but I can't hit three buttons at once. All right, here we go. And then as I get close, as you see, we I usually overshoot, so I'm going to pull in the crane until it goes around the slot there. So I'm just getting this lined up. So. And then we'll start going up again on the on this. So I like how these sliders work. So I don't like I can physically lift my crane, but I prefer using these sliders. So that's helpful. All right, so we're pretty close here. Uh, a little bit high and a little bit in. Okay. There we go. Put a little positive pressure on it, so when it's ready, it will drop in. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. Of course I am. Okay, there we go. There 
You know, let's put a little positive pressure on it so that it's... Ah, come on now. You know, this, ideally, the crane should be operated from right in front of it. So you can see, or I need a some sort of camera. Okay, good. So those are in. So as you see those two are in. Next thing we want to do, want to press the um, clamp on the connector. Now we get a green light. That tells us they're aligned. Now we can connect. Once they're connected, I can uh, disconnect my crane, first of all, and move that back out of the way. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and press my swivel clamp, push the swivel down, swivel grab. Okay, swivel's grabbed. Next, I can disconnect the clamp, and I will go ahead and push the connector down, disconnect, connect. Uh, we're all set now. So that's connected, table's connected. Let's go ahead and start spinning up. You can hear we're drilling again. I need to turn on my slurry. Swivel's going to push down. And we're drilling. So I have a large electric motor on there. So I have no clue yet how much infrastructure you're going to need to clean your slurry. But definitely the slurry was the issue. But we're drilling, we're making good progress. This would probably be better as... Um, I should also put a toggle on there, put an ore and a toggle to keep that... having some positive pressure on that. But you can hear we're drilling, and you can see I'm pushing the rod down as we go. So you could probably achieve higher speeds if you're... Um, you know, electric, you're going to use an enormous amount of electricity doing it this way uh, with a motor. What I would, I'm probably going to switch to is some sort of diesel operated system. But um, again, this is all infinite electricity that allows me to test this out without having to screw with it too much. But as you can see, so this, if this had a toggle, this would be nice because I could be working my crane and setting up the next one. But as you can see, we're drilling here. So this is kind of the basic concept of drilling here. Now, I don't know how far down the oil is. I've yet to get to that stage yet. But this is coming along nicely with um, figuring out how to drill. So I will be releasing this uh, oil rig on the workshop. As you can see, it's kind of a mess. Buttons all over the place. Um, I know where everything is. The crane's not perfect, but it's going to be an example like the uh, connection example I showed before. All right, so I'm still pushing down, um, you know, pushing this uh, rod down. So what I, I kind of like this system. It's not perfect, but I like it. So what I'll probably end up doing is put some sort of ability to have a, a rotary. The other thing I had was, which I actually kind of like better, is having a stack of rods and then a sliding crane that just puts them right in there. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But So we've used about 5,000 liters of slurry. I want to check on my slurry here. So let's go ahead and, you know, if I could toggle that, it could drill on its own. So you see we're filling up with dirty slurry here. So let's check our flow rates. Um, that's incredibly important. So I don't know if it's the filters or not. I doubt the filters are doing anything, but you um, see that's going in. So you can hear it stop drilling. That's because I stopped putting pressure down on the swivel. As soon as I put pressure down on the swivel. So, you know, we're, we are drilling here. It's working pretty well. And so next thing I'm going to do here is really quick. Let's go to the, the uh, wellhead. And let's look. So... The drill depth is 9.9 .9 meters. The well depth is 10 meters. So we've gone 10 meters. That makes sense. Let's look inside here while we're at it. 
So as you can see, we um, we push the rod through the drill. The drill actually doesn't move, it just sits there. But we push this rod through. I don't know how far we go till we hit um, the actual oil. It's probably not physicalized, it's probably imaginary. And it just hits a certain level and it knows it hits it. So I don't know uh, when, how we know we're gonna hit this oil. That is still a mystery to me. Yeah, so I don't know. So let's um, let's actually pull this in. Okay, I'm gonna make a quick microcontroller. Okay. And this is just gonna be so that I don't have to hold that swivel the whole time. So that's gonna be. Um, you know what? I'm not going to overcomplicate this. Let's just switch them to toggle buttons. So let's see. Uh, where are we at here? But I'm trying, just trying to see which set these are. Right there, It's these are swivel up and down. Okay. That's swivel up, swivel down. Okay, good. So I'm just going to switch these to toggles. All right, so we switched those over to toggles. That's gonna fix that. All right, so that was definitely an issue um, I was having. When your slurry runs out, you stop drilling. So, you know, it said something in here. Let me find the, uh, see if it says the exact thing. So it, um, yeah, so see it here, it says required for effective drilling. So it is. it says required here um, in the update. It, it They made it a little bit vague, like you could do without, you know, I didn't know if they'd have damage in or not, but you definitely need slurry to be able to drill, which makes sense. Um, and so having the toggle on is going to be helpful to be able to just have this push itself down and it'll eventually go to the end range and stop. So that is good. All right, so that's good to have. Let me see what else I want to do here. All right, so this should allow us to drill for a little bit. Let me add some stuff to these. So I like this rotary system. It's, you know, it's not perfect, but it works pretty well. Crane-wise, you know, it'd probably be easier if I had a different system, but, you know, it's, it's a little bit more involved than I like. So, like, if I was building a system to actually use long term I'd probably change it this is just going to be an example of course and then um, you know it will be I will change it a little bit once once I kind of figure out the best methods here you know this is just figuring out best methods essentially oh, I don't want these all over the place here height wise I kind of want them in line all right and so yeah so I, this is just kind of a best method is not best methods this is just trying to get an example out so that's pretty good there all right, let's go and let's drill a little bit more. So I'm trying to kind of get the methods so you guys can see from start to finish how this is working. So come over to my crane. I want to clip clamp on, click clamp on. Crane goes out. All right, does it grab it? All right, it's not quite grabbing it yet. Let's move this a little. Uh, so why is this not grabbing? Crane clamp. Huh. This is the first time it's had issues. Oh, it's because there's two of them there. Let me wiggle it, see if that helps. Let me rotate this here, see if that does it. So, okay, so the collisions on one another, I can't do this like this. That's fine. All right, let's go back, and I'll fix it. So, I, you know, we, we did the Workbench podcast yesterday, and, you know, we were kind of... Um, reminiscing about how games used to be back in the good old days, kind of doing the old man rants. And, you know, games back in the day didn't, you know, they didn't really, they didn't hold your hand. You had to figure out these things on your own. And that was part of the game, was figuring out on your own. You know, using your own intellect and your own um, gumption, essentially, to try to figure something out. And that's something that, to some certain extent, has been lost and so it's part of the fun, especially for me, is um, is figuring this stuff out on my own. You know, and I can understand some people. Where is the swivel? Swivel off. Connect your slider up. Where's swivel? Did I delete swivel? What is going? Okay, I didn't connect. 
All right, so that was part of the fun of gaming was actually figuring things out your own. I think, you know, games went to a very much of a hand, hand holdy type of situation. What is this? Okay. Let's, okay, these. Uh, what is going on here? What am I doing here? That goes there. What is going on here? Oh, I never put them in there. Okay. Uh, games have gone to a very handholdy type of. I I got a phone call, so that's why I got distracted. Um, games have gone to a very handholdy type of of gameplay where, you know, it doesn't. You know, like think of like Call of Duty. Like you can use something that lets you see through a wall. It's wall hacks essentially. You know, and for a game like you know, I play Tarkov as my primary shooter, and um, you know, like that's antithetical to have wall hacks and you know it was back you know quite a few years now but you know in my childhood you didn't have games that did things silly things like wall hacks and people started in a lot of games started putting in wall hacks and so people get used to it they get used to it holding their hand and then that's one of the reasons I think we have a bunch of cheating problems in say Tarkov is you know people grew up using wall hacks and expect to be able to see through the wall and see their enemy and when they can't, they get frustrated, and they're like, oh, nobody could play like this. This is too hard. And so then they go, and they, um, I got to make sure I don't hit that too hard. And then so they expect everybody's using wall hacks, so they go and get cheats to use wall hacks. And so it's kind of like this was, you know, I know a lot of people like really in-depth guides, and I'm trying, I'm doing my best to get some guides out. And there's nothing wrong with wanting some guides, of course, but, um, you know, for a lot of us, the enjoyment is not having our handheld and having to figure this out on our own. That's part of the, you know, part of it's engineering our own solutions. And so, you know, I can see why people have some of these issues. Hold on, I'm just trying to see what's up here. Oh, you know what it is? Okay. You know what it is here. Uh, let me clamp this really quick. The drill is... Um, it didn't reset the length, of the depth of this well. So the well is still 10 meters. I was like, why am I not hitting anything? It's because uh, the well is already set to be there. So let's go ahead and stop this here. So the table clamp is on, so the table will hold this. All right, so we can, we're can we already ready to add another rod. So let's go ahead. Table's clamp. This clamp should come off. This clamp should come off. Let's send that all the way up. Let's go ahead and grab another pipe. Um, hitting every button that I shouldn't be hitting. So anyways, kind of rant over. But the whole point of it is, you know, part of the game is figuring this stuff out on your own. It's, you know, I understand if you don't like that. But, you know, you, you got to wait for some other people to figure it out. And, like, you know, that's what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm going to put out some tutorials I already have and... But, you know, try try learning some of it on your own as well. You know, that's, I think you might find, you might not, but you might find that that's entertaining, that you're learning how to do it on your own. And it, you get a sense of accomplishment when you've actually figured it, something out on your own. And so, you know, that's that's often some, something that I find that it's, it's fun to try to figure these things out on your own. So table clamp is staying there. Connector is going up right there. Okay, connector clamp is going on table clamp is going to come off. This will allow me to put the connector down some because I don't want to drop this pipe into the hole. Let's let's put it that way. All right, and then what I want to do is come up on the slider. One thing we found is if you're too close to the other part, it won't let you slide the pipe up and down. That's probably so that you don't um, have a big physics explosion. I'm going to do this too. I'm going to shut the weather off. I uh, should turn the wind off because it's just probably making a ton of noise that we don't need. But I don't know. It's kind of just my whole little rant on, like, you know, I see it a lot. And, you know, it's 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 the kind of like the classic old man meme, you know, back in my day. It's like, you know, it was funny. You know, people were accusing me of, of yelling in a, in a, in a, uh, in messages because I was capitalizing certain words. It's like, no, dude. It's like, uh. These are backwards too. I gotta flip, fix these. It's like, no, dude. Like, 
back before there was text messages, you know, you would capitalize important words so that you could skim a you could skim a paragraph and get the gist of what the paragraph was trying to say and not have to read everything in that particular paragraph. So if you were going to skim something, you might have a couple capitalized words that okay, these are the important words. These this is what I need to focus on. You know, and people are like, oh, you're yelling. It's like, no, dude, not everything started after 1995. You know, some some things happened before 1995. And, uh, you know, some of us lived before 1995 when, um, you know, when that wasn't the case. You know, so kind of rant over, but. All right, so this is going to go there. All right, so now we're going to uh, table clamp again. Swivel clamps coming off. Send the swivel all the way up. I'm going to do the connector up so that it's right about there. Connector clamp is coming on. All right, and now we're going to grab another one. So we're going to be three pipes in. So the nice thing is actually every time I respawn this this um, derrick, it's going, it's going to keep the weld depth the same. And so the benefit of that and why you kind of have to do that is you know, you wouldn't want your all your drill progress to disappear every time you every time you had to make a small modification to your oil rig. So this makes a lot of sense. So it's kind of nice. As I learn more, I'm not losing the progress. But definitely, you know, I I would uh, I recommend to people start trying out. You know, you know, figure try to get some joy out of figuring some of this stuff out. Like, that's a huge sense of accomplishment for me when I figure something out. Like, I was getting a little frustrated with, oh, why is this not working, slurry? And then I'm like, okay, let's try this. And I tried it, and it worked. And you know what? It's it's much better now. Okay, so table clamp is coming off. Let's go down with the connector. Oh, I can't. Okay, so if I go down with the connector. So table clamp. So that is uh, currently where we are drill-wise. So that needs to go there. All right, that's fine. I have the space. Uh, do I have the space, though? See, uh, that's why that you can build super high on these benches, um, and that's why is the pipes are pretty long. So I definitely want to make sure I drill all the way down as low as I can before I put the next pipe on. So I'm developing new methods too, and I enjoy this coming up with some procedures. You know, somebody who's in some very uh, procedure-oriented businesses, this is important. So actually, you know what I can do? All right, this is lo uh, we're locked to the table, we're locked to the clamp. Let's turn on the drill. And I'm going to push it down with the connector. Maybe not. Okay, I need the swivel. I forgot I need the swivel. Okay, let's let's use the swivel here. Connector's going down. Swivel is connecting. Let's drill a little bit. And let's get this orange down here to the pipe connector. So actually, you could keep the pipe connector stationary. Turn on my slurry. Once the slurry's on, you'll see it goes down. So this is automated. This is more automated now. You could fully automate this again. I, I tell you know I would suggest to a lot of people try not automating everything, man. Try doing some manual stuff. You know people say I get bored. Yeah, it's bored watching something do something for you. It's engaging when you're doing it yourself. So you know like I could make this crane automatically retract and go there, which I might. Um, but it's also fun to do it myself and to actually have to operate the machines. You know, I've always been an, an equipment operator, and part of the joy of these things is operating yourself. So this could actually be stationary because it has a swivel that will go up and down. I can actually drill through this, so I could actually leave this the way it is. All right, so I'm going to drill it until it gets to the top of this. All right, that's good right there. So we're done drilling, so let's go ahead and shut that off. Let's bring down the drill. It's very tolerable, like, this is still clamped, but it will still let me drill, so that's actually very helpful. So slurry's coming off, swivel clamp, and then that's going up. We'll just let it go all the way to the top. Uh, we're going to unclamp this, and we'll move the connector up. Probably there is good. That looks pretty good. Let's start um, craning in. All right, let's go up a little bit. And let's see, where do I need to go? In towards me. So we'll retract that a little bit. If I put a little positive pressure on there, it will slide in whenever it's ready. Need in up, up more and in more. 
There we go. We're almost there. Up a little bit more. It'll probably snap in. So it's pretty, uh, it's actually pretty tolerant of, like, your nonsense. All right, so we want to lock this, and we want to probably go down a little bit. There we go. Green light, green light. We can connect. Now we want to disconnect the clamp. Cable clamp is still on. We can disconnect our crane clamp. And rotate the crane out of the way. We're going to enable the swivel clamp. We're going to um, go ahead and turn on the table. Turn on the slurry pumps. Now we're drilling again. So it, it's actually pretty fast. Let's go ahead and connector, disconnect the connector. Nice, so we're drilling. All right, so now, one of the nice things, one of the things I'm so excited with this, this gives you so much to do. And this gives you a lot of multiplayer. We played um, on the Workbench podcast, we played multiplayer for uh, a couple hours, you know, trying to figure things out. And look at all these jobs. You can have a crane operator, you can have somebody, um, you know, operating other stuff, but you can also do it yourself, which is nice. You know, so it's nice that if somebody is not, you know, if you don't have friends around, play with you, you can still do a bunch of it yourself. Alright, there we go. That's connected. Crane in. Let's go ahead and start rotating, going up. So you see how I'm starting to get good at this, where this all needs to go. Alright, that's going to go to there, and then we'll move up. So I can have the next pipe section ready while I'm drilling. Which that is really, that adds some efficiency to it that makes it really effective that I can uh, do all these things. So like you see, I'm currently holding the crane slider up. That allows me to slide the pipe. I can also move my crane up, but I'm kind of, I don't even need that feature anymore. And I won't be using that in the future. Just the sliders are really effective. All right, so now what I'm going to do is, let's see. I'm going to actually move this connector down a hair. Like there. I'll actually move this connector all the way down here. All right, and then I'm actually going to put this back where it should be. So right. So I'm going to watch. So I'm lowering it, as you can see. I could speed that up. I just have it at currently a slower. And I want to go about the first, maybe third, right there is good. All right, now, as soon as this goes all the way down to there, I can go ahead and push this, shut the slurry off, push the swivel all the way to the top. Connect the next uh, the pipe, reconnect the swivel, and we're drilling again. Um, you know, the great thing with this game, this is a building game. I've seen so many comments over the last couple days of people being like, it's a survival game, why is this here? Who asked for this? A lot of people asked for this. A lot of people are going to enjoy this. This is going to bring a lot of people in. The game cannot be so specific and so small, have so small of an audience or the game will die. And this is going to add a lot of gameplay. All week before this update, I saw tons of people having really cool machines. They've already been building for this. I didn't want to build anything until I knew how to do this first. Um, but this, you know, you're going to need trucks to move pipes. You're going to need to move oil. You're going to need to move all your different types of uh, fuels. You're going to have to build um, fractional distillation towers. You're going to have to do so much work. You have to move slurry. You're going to have to clean slurry. And so this adds so much, and I can't even imagine going out to, in the ocean and doing this. People are going to build um, rigs on on ships. It's This is going to add an absolute amazing amount of gameplay. And guess what? If you don't like it, that's fine. It might not be gameplay for you, but the world does not revolve around one person. And just because the, you don't like the gameplay does not mean others will not. And I see this all the time. Who asked for this? Nobody wanted this. Yes, people wanted this. You are not everybody. And just because you may not have wanted this content does not mean that other people do not. I, frankly, I couldn't care less about weapons DLC. I use it a little bit, but I barely use it compared to everything else. Well, guess what? I'm happy they made weapons DLC because it made a lot of people happy who wanted weapons. And I don't understand the gatekeeping people are doing of like... Oh, if it if it doesn't if it isn't exactly search and rescue, then it shouldn't be in the game. Well, guess what? The best feature of this game is it's a building game. And if you made it a great building game, but only for search and rescue, you'd have such a small audience. The game would have died years ago because there's no way they can fund it. You know, let's say there are 50 people who would love to play a in involved depth in depth building game 
that's only search and rescue, okay? Well, now add in weapons. Now you have 500 people. And guess what? Those other 450 people, they help fund the game play that you like as well. So it's to all of our benefit that we have enough of an audience that this game can survive. So before you kind of think about, oh, you know, who wants this, who wants that? Well, guess what? This is what keeps the game alive is this new content. I guarantee you, if you look at the numbers on Steam, you're going to see a lot of people buying Industrial Frontier. I already see my video counts of how many views I'm getting have shot way up. Why? Because people who stepped away from the game who might have been bored or there wasn't something for them to do, guess what? They step back because now there's something uh, that they're interested in playing with. And so that's very important to keep the game alive is to have plenty of content for people. So I'm getting really fast at, um, at you know, doing all these connections and everything else. That's, um, that's nice, too, is you start to get a little bit better. It's like with any sort of machinery or mechanical endeavor is as you get, um, the more you do it, the, the faster and the better you get at it. And you start to develop some good procedures to do this stuff. But I know many, many little rants, but it was just, it gets in my nerves, the negativity. And for, especially for new players, don't take the negativity as the community is negative. There is a, there is a negative part of every community. And they luckily in a lot of these places, they congregate in very specific areas. We're going to connect and we will, um, what is this one? Talk about, nope. Okay, good. Let's go. Now, oh, I want to disconnect this, bring that in. There we go. All right, and that's connected. All right, so we're connected there. Let's go ahead and we'll remove the clamp that will remove, allow us to do the connection without actually getting rid of it. Push that down. Let's go ahead and turn this on. Slurry's coming on. And we're drilling again. All right, so we're pushing more drill in. So again, um, you know, I only have, what do I have, one? I, I, I had a pipe. All right, so I'm out of pipe. That's fine. I could reload this whole bench in and get more pipe. But the nice thing is we keep the amount of drilled, of the how long the hole is we've drilled. Um, you know, we'll end here in a second. I still have to figure out some pumping stuff. I'm nowhere near getting this down there, but, um, you know, it's you can kind of see how we're, how we're functioning at the moment working pretty well but this is a lot of fun this this builds a lot of stuff uh, let's see where we're at so we've used about 9,000 liters of slurry you can see here we are as far as I know now the slurry is free so that's not something we have to worry about this is how much dirty slurry we put in um, I'm still trying to figure out see I I'm not sure why they did the, the filters the way they did them I don't know man um, they, you know, I think they had a reason because of fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is, so essentially what you do, let me find a fractional distillation tower and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so here's a fractional distillation tower. So what you're doing is you're putting the oil in and you see, you're, and you're heating it up. And so you see the oil is heated in a furnace, the oil, crude oil comes through, it's heated in a furnace, it comes through. The lowest level, you get lubricating oil, paraffin wax, and asphalt. Above that, you're getting fuel oil, uh, probably like you would heat your home with. Above that, you're getting diesel. Then you're getting kerosene, and you're getting petrol. Above that, you're getting butane and propane. So the things we're, we're kind of uh, thinking about in game are going to be most likely, um, you know, diesel and jet fuel uh, right there. And so you're getting them at different heights in the tower. So I haven't played this with this yet, but as we um, actually get some oil out of this, we're going to probably have to put it through the fractional distillation, and at certain levels it's going to come out. Now, I have to figure that out, but I need to get a quantity of oil to do that. All right, so let's go ahead back to the game here. So I think we'll end it there. Um, I think this has been a good kind of insight. Uh, getting, getting drilling, as you can see. So definitely... 
slurry is important. I will start doing some more testing, trying to figure out uh, the best ways to clean slurry. I had I was cleaning my slurry before, but the issue was that I don't I think it was contaminating my fresh slurry. So I need to make sure that I'm this is coming out and cleaning the slurry properly. So I have to I have to test it to see. But making good progress here. As you see, I have what is it one, two, four rods in there so far. Uh, so we're 40 meters down. Who knows how deep you're gonna have to go? I, you know, I'm kind of interested in seeing the different depths we're gonna have to go. But really super cool, I think this is. Yeah, I see we're getting around uh, 30 meters down. But um, I think this is gonna be super cool, man. This is gonna add so much gameplay. It's really gonna make it so that uh, people are gonna have to work together to be efficient. Like right now, I could respawn this base and play by myself and get more uh, rods if I wanted, or I could go truck some in. Um, it's really cool, and I think this like we had a, we had a lot of fun yesterday just trying to figure this stuff out. And I can imagine, you know, right now we're like, hey, dude, we're almost out of uh, drilling rods. I need you to get some drilling rods, you know. And so somebody heads off in their truck and gets some more drilling rods. You know, that is good entertainment for me far as I'm concerned. Uh, the, you need to build trucks and trailers to carry uh, rods. You need to be able to load them in. Um, you know, you need to have a crane operator. You need somebody on here. You need somebody checking your slurry, somebody cleaning your slurry. You know, and then when you start actually making oil, you're going to have to truck that oil off. Um, you're going to have to distill the oil. And so, really great gameplay, I think. And so this is going to have a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoy that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.